Today, I want to discuss disability and friendship. Personally, since my past life living with autism and mild intellectual disability, I have been having such tough luck making friendships and acquaintanceships. They have all been making my present life complicated and tougher than before, making acquaintanceships and friendships and relationships with people, especially others of the opposite sex. And although formally being often under supervision by other people made my independence limited during my years of childhood and adolescence through special ed and then the occupational training center OTC school program during my late teen years in high school until 2006. Little did I know they have been making my younger days tougher with truly having little to no friends. People with disabilities often have little to no social status, move involuntarily, and are separated from others, or excluded from commonplace socializing, or denied personal agency over their lives, and are exposed to abuse and neglect. Also, people with disabilities are often segregated denied personal agency over their lives and exposed to social isolation. The Office of Disability Issues of New Zealand said that low income, discrimination, relationship breakdown, and crime or the fear of crime are just some of the factors behind disabled people being socially excluded. Speaking of this matter, Andrew Oliver, the founder and director of Do For One in New York City said, many of us have developed unwarranted fears by not having enough contact with marginalized people. Even if unlimited funds are distributed and all the formal services through paid staff are in place, many still have no way of connecting to their community to make friends. And this might seem insignificant, but the problems it creates are big and complicated. Additionally, Andrew Oliver mentioned the feeling and reality of people with special needs being protected by society and having very few to no friends at all. He said that as crucial as families are, it takes more than just relying on a faithful few. The help of friends and the surrounding community is so vital, but if I and people with disabilities are all tightly in a controlled setting where we are being protected from society and society is being protected by us, then we cannot meet anyone and grow as people in the ways that many who experience ordinary privileges have. People with disabilities often have extraordinarily little to no friendships and relationships. And even with seeing and meeting the same people often, they are not considered friends, but just acquaintances. Besides, both friendship and acquaintance are technically two different meanings. The word friendship is defined as relationships of mutual affection between people. It is a stronger form of interpersonal bond than an association and has been studied in academic fields such as communication, sociology, social psychology, anthropology, and philosophy. A friend is a person with whom one is on intimate terms and for whom one feels warm affection, a friend who can be trusted. On the other hand, the word acquaintance is defined as knowing someone a little about, but not being friends or anything. It is less intimate than a friend such as a person in your class whose name you know, and that's it.
and the one having extremely limited to no social connections between each other. An acquaintance is the opposite of a stranger. Overall, friendship is more intimate than acquaintanceship alone. People with disabilities face deeper matters and issues in the life of having friends nowadays. For example, people with special needs may or may not know when they are being peer pressured negatively or positively by people they try to befriend with. There are other types of friendships people with disabilities do not want to be into. Those are bad friends, such as those who are either fake, abusive, or toxic. Bad friendships cause mental and emotional health issues. The same goes for people with disabilities, except this matter is seriously deeper than deep. We live in a world that gets shattered so often that it makes us all vulnerable to being wounded by broken relationships and pushed around by bureaucracies. But people with disabilities are far more likely to experience deeper wounds, often repeatedly so, such as stigma, segregation, being bullied, and so on. And the worst thing about it is that for years, there have been no laws or money being passed on that can address this concern as effectively as personal and freely given relationships. But these kinds of relationships rarely happen. Instead, most people with disabilities have only paid workers for their lives. If people with disabilities are vulnerable to at least a few freely given relationships from anyone in the valued world, it is less likely for us to be inflicted with further wounding. There should be community programs to open doors to people and me with disabilities for many new possibilities we might not otherwise experience because these natural connections really happen independently. Most people with disabilities live in professionally controlled settings, which serve as an actual barrier to genuine relationships forming. There have not been any community programs between the two worlds that really connect. People with disabilities do get help from learning to build healthy and positive re friendships and relationships with other people. Speaking of building healthy and positive friendships and relationships are what people and I with disabilities should have for our own good and mental and emotional health. People with disabilities should be having positive and healthy friendships and relationships in their lives, especially certain ones which are healthy, positive, and genuine. Positive friendships are just as they sound friendships that help the well-being of me and people with special needs. They support us, give us listening ears when we need it most, and encourage the best out of every situation. Additionally, positive friendships can be one of the great ways to help and improve self-esteem and supply support for me and disabled people that we need. Friendships are vital for people with disabilities because they also provide opportunities to improve social skills, practice ways to interact, and boost self-confidence. Developing and maintaining friendships can be difficult for me and people with special needs. True and healthy friendships are rare and precious gifts, so we should never take them for granted. This reminds me of a saying from yours truly, money cannot buy love, it cannot buy friendship at all, the price of them there always will be. We should appreciate the people in our lives and let each other know how much we love one another and care for one another in our special ways.